Travels and Traditions with Bert Wolf is a classic travel journal, a record of Bert's search for information about our world and how we fit into it. Bert travels to the source of each story, trying to find the connections between our history and what is happening today. What he discovers can improve our lives and our understanding of the world around us. And of course, there's always Bert's slightly irreverent sense of humor. Uh-oh. Oh. oh, my goodness. We're going to need a bigger can. In part one of this program, we saw how the Palm Beaches got started and eventually became the place where the rich and famous wanted to spend their winters. People like the Astors, the Kennedys, Burt Reynolds, Celine Dion, and Jimmy Buffett. In part two of this program, we'll check out a few more famous residents, including Rod Stewart, Jack Nicholas, and Venus and Serena Williams. We'll take a look at an art form that is always on the move. Follow the migration of the snowbirds, and discover that the Palm Beaches are home to thousands of people who are not rich and famous and just love the place. And we'll find out how Prohibition was the inspiration for NASCAR racing. Having sold over a hundred million records worldwide, Rod Stewart is one of the best-selling musical artists of all time. His father was born in Edinburgh in Scotland and his mother is from London. As a kid, his primary interest was in football or what is known in the United States as soccer. His favorite team was Arsenal. He was a good athlete and fantastically aggressive on the field. Members of his family were also great fans of the singer Al Jolson. And would sing and play his hits. Stewart collected his records and saw his films, read books about him, and was influenced by his performance style and his attitude towards his audience. Oh, Molly. His introduction to rock and roll was hearing Little Richard and seeing Bill Haley in the Comets. In 1959, his father bought him a guitar. The first song he learned was the folk tune, It Takes a Worried Man to Sing a Worried Song. It takes a worried man to sing a worried song. In 1960, he tried out for the Brentford Soccer Club, but after the tryout, he never heard from them again. Years later, he pointed out that it was a lot easier to be a professional singer than a professional soccer player, noting that when he was singing, he could stop for a beer, but not if he was a soccer player. Disillusioned by rock and roll, he saw Otis Redding perform in concert and began listening to Sam Cooke records. He became fascinated by rhythm and blues and soul music. I am flying. I am flying. On December 31st, 1994, Stewart played in front of 3.5 million people on the Copacabana Beach in Rio. That put him in the Guinness Book of World Records for staging the largest free rock concert. He was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. He was operated upon, and the operation challenged his ability to sing. He had to learn how to sing all over again. Since then, he's been active in raising funds for the City of Hope Foundation to find cures for all forms of cancer, especially those affecting children. While I was working on this segment, I was reminded that my son Andrew, when he was a senior cameraman for CNN prior to his dignified retirement, interviewed Rod Stewart. And sent me a picture of the two of them. That's it. Rod's on the left. For many years, Rod has been a resident of the Palm Beaches. His oceanfront home has its own carting track, a private beach, and a soccer pitch.
And there are many people in the Palm Beaches who became famous in the world of sports. Greg Norman is one of the world's most successful professional golfers. He won 91 international tournaments, including 20 PGA tournaments. In 2001, he was inducted into the World Golf Hall of Fame. Greg was born in Queensland, Australia. When he was 15 years old, his mother taught him to play golf. She was a talented golfer and had Greg caddy for her at the golf club in Brisbane. When he was 20 years old, he began working at professional golf clubs. When he was 26 years old, he began touring with the professionals. In 1981, he played at the Masters Tournament in Augusta, Georgia, and came in three strokes behind the winner, Tom Watson. Many professional golfers, including Tiger Woods and Ricky Fowler, moved to Florida to take advantage of the weather, which allowed them to practice all year round. In 1991, Greg Norman arrived for the same reason. He even built his own golf course, based on the design of the Royal Melbourne course in his native Australia. Jack Nicklaus was born in Columbus, Ohio, and started playing golf at the age of 10. By the time he was 17, he had won 27 major events. His father ran a few pharmacies, and Jack planned to be a pharmacist. But while he was at Ohio State University, he shifted his focus and dreamed of becoming an insurance salesman. In 1960, he married Barbara Bash, who was a nursing student at Ohio State. Fifteen months later, they had the first of their five children. Earning a living became significantly more important, and the insurance agent idea was dropped. He turned professional and was soon able to pay the rent. In 1960, at the age of 20, he played the final 36 holes of the U.S. Open with Ben Hogan. Hogan later commented that he had just played with a kid who should have won by 10 shots. I'm always impressed to hear about people who became very successful when they were very young. But at my age, I am equally impressed, if not more so, to hear about people who have gotten on in age and are still very successful. I should therefore like to point out that when Nicholas turned 50 in 1990, he joined the senior PGA Tour and continued his success. His books vary from instructional to autobiographical. With his Golf My Way, considered one of the best instructional golf books of all time. Try to place that off the left heel. And if you can do that, and think about it shot after shot. The video of the same name is the best-selling golf instructional to date. Hmm, how about that? Jack and his wife, Barbara, are active in a number of important charities centered in the Palm Beaches, including the Nicholas Healthcare Foundation, which provides free services to more than 4,000 hospitalized children and their families, the Pediatric Oncology Support Team, and the Safe Kids Program. Venus Williams was born in 1980. Her sister Serena was born a year later. They are both professional tennis players and two of the superstars of the sport. They often compete professionally, but they have always maintained a close personal friendship, supporting each other at matches. Good racket speed, good racket speed, Venus. Speed that racket head up. Apparently, they started learning to play tennis when their father began giving them lessons. They were about four and a half years old. In 1988, the sisters bought a place in the Palm Beaches. It has six bedrooms and seven bathrooms, which of course leads me to the question, who gets the extra bathroom? Venus spent two years overseeing the construction of the home. There's a room devoted to their tennis trophies and a room for watching movies. Nice place.
In 1920, the federal government of the United States, in its great wisdom, decided to make it illegal to manufacture or sell alcoholic beverages. It was known as prohibition. However, the law's primary result was the massive introduction of the criminal manufacture and sale of alcoholic beverages. More than any other event, prohibition helped crime get organized. The production of alcoholic beverages was known as bootlegging. The manufacturing facilities were fairly easy to hide, but delivery to the points of consumption was challenging. That looks like a car. Sure does. Well, step on it. Drivers had to avoid being caught by federal agents, so they worked on improving the speed and handling of the cars that they used to distribute the liquor. The drivers were known as runners, and from time to time, they would get together to demonstrate their skills. By the end of the 1940s, it had become an organized sport, and the drivers got together and formed the National Association of Stock Car Auto Racing, what we now call NASCAR. White flag right here, white flag, one more good one. It's become one of America's most watched sports. NASCAR got started in Florida, so it's only fitting that one of its stars lived here in the Palm Beaches. Kurt Busch has his 26th Sprint Cup win. Nice job, everybody. 1994 was his first full year as a driver, during which he won 10 consecutive races at 10 different tracks. Busch got under him and muscled Jimmy Spencer. You don't see that often. In 2002, Busch became the first driver in NASCAR history to win the most races in his first winning season. He's one of only two drivers to accomplish that feat, along with Carl Edwards, who did it three years later. Drawing exists in two dimensions. That's a drawing by Leonardo da Vinci. Painting exists in two dimensions. That's a landscape by David Hockney. Sculpture operates in three dimensions. Also, a distinction is made between round, freestanding sculpture and works that are attached to something known as a relief. I guess it's a relief if you can lean on something. Traditional sculptures usually just stand around, or in some cases, they just sit around. During the past hundred years or so, a new type of sculpture has been developed. It's called kinetic sculpture, and it moves. Kinetic sculpture has a time component, which gives it a fourth dimension. Its movement can be the result of natural causes like wind, or it can be caused by a motorized mechanism, or the viewer can cause the movement. One of the most famous artists to develop kinetic works was Albert Calder. His mobiles are moved by wind. For the most part, the works of Gene Tangley are moved by motors. And on various occasions, I was the source of energy. These days, one of the outstanding kinetic artists is Ralfonso. His works have been installed in Switzerland, Russia, the Netherlands, the U.S., and China. Palm Beach is our paradise, and I've come here for more than 30 years, loving every minute of it. Boynton Beach actually is Kinetic Art City, USA, so for people who have an interest in kinetic art and art that moves, this is the place to come and see it. I find inspiration in nature, mostly, and um, looking out over the ocean, seeing the motion of uh, palm trees, and that certainly is an inspiration for my moving, wind-driven sculptures. Now I am working here, actually in the city of Boynton Beach, on a, a sculpture group called Reflections. And uh, it is for the new town hall of Boynton Beach. When you see the, the uh, sculpture, you see that there are wings that intersect in space. The original inspiration actually came from 
how people meet and interact. Uh, people from all over the world come together and interact, uh, join for a moment and leave. And that is sort of reflected in the, uh, in the way I designed that sculpture. Alex Dreyfus Jr. was born in 1932 in New York City. In the mid-1950s, he commanded a 40-man military photo lab in Germany. The lab conducted critical reconnaissance. After returning home in 1958, he earned an MBA, and in 1963, he founded the Photoelectronics Corporation to address the problems of color photography being reproduced. He invented the video color negative analyzer. In 1970, a motion picture version of this machine earned an Academy Award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. In 1978, he founded what became the Cultural Council of Palm Beach County. He also led the efforts that produced the Raymond F. Kravitz Center for the Performing Arts, the cultural centerpiece of the Palm Beaches. Thank you. A few years ago, the Kravis Center became the 11th most popular venue for ticket sales in the world, the sixth most popular in the United States, and the first in Florida. But the Palm Beaches are not just places for the rich and famous to build their homes. It has also become a primary destination for the snowbirds. According to my research, a snowbird is a person who migrates in a southern direction from the higher latitudes and cooler climate of the northern United States and Canada. Says so right here. During the winter, they migrate to the warmer areas of the southern United States, particularly southern Florida. Apparently, the species is not in danger of extinction and considered relatively safe to be near. Uh, the operative word here is relatively safe. The Canadian Air Force actually has a team of pilots who fly to Florida during the winter and are known as the snowbirds. Check out the name on the front of their planes. When we were shooting this program about the people who live in the Palm Beaches and those who come here on vacation, Nicholas pointed out that there were a lot of activities that were great for teenagers, and we should include some. So I suggested he go off with our cameraman and put together an example. Here's his segment on trail biking. What's special about riding here in, in the Palm Beach area? The, you get the, the natural Florida environment here uh -huh. uh, with the palm trees, uh, sand, uh, uh, shell rock. It's very exciting. It's very fast up and down hills. So you don't have to climb for 30 miles to get a nice downhill ride. Woohoo! Can you show me the equipment and get me ready? Yes. The most important thing is your helmet. Yeah, safety we're, first. We're going to make sure that fits correctly and uh, keep your head safe from, God forbid, any impacts. So which trails are we going to be doing today? We'll try the beginner trails, and if you feel comfortable, we'll go on to the advanced blue and, and maybe even a, a black diamond trail. Are there many different levels of trails here for different age groups? all different age groups, all different rider abilities, uh -huh. from toddlers to the elderly are welcome to join on these trails. We have blue trails for the beginners, um, just with some gentle rolling hills and some small obstacles, but fortunately there's some bypasses around them if you don't feel comfortable going over them. So it's a really good family activity? It is. We have lots of families here at uh, the trail system. Um, we have events for families where kids can ride together and even ladies' events, ladies' nights. That's awesome. If I was coming here on vacation, where would I get a nice mountain bike like that to ride? You can rent mountain bikes like this from, your local, from the local bicycle shops, such as Tri Bike Run, and many others in the area as well. So it's not going to be hard to go find a bike? Not at all. 
So Nicholas, yeah. the most important thing to remember um, when, you're, when you're going over obstacles is to keep your feet level and you want to keep in the ready position. So you want to keep your knees and elbows bent and that'll make you comfortable. Future. You're very welcome. I hope you come join us down here in South Florida again. Thank you. Thousands of people live in the Palm Beaches because it's just a nice place to live. Take, for example, Paul Wade and Andrew Cope, men of the middle class, as that term is traditionally used. He has become the primary editor of my television programs. Hail All hail Caesar! Caesar. And I love it when I come back to the Palm Beaches and edit my programs with them. For Travels and Traditions, I'm Bert Wolf. Play it again, Sam, for old time's sake. You must remember this. Good idea. If you'd like to see this program again, or any of the hundreds of programs we've made for our public broadcasting stations, or see the material that was great, but we couldn't fit it into the program. You can see it all on BertWolf.com or YouTube Bert Wolf. This could be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. <laughs>